Uh, hello and welcome to the behind the scenes of The Big Wild North. Uh, it's a short film that I, I directed, shot, edited, did visual effects for and, and, and a few other things. Uh, and uh, we shot the film back in uh, 2013, it was September I believe. So it's been a while and uh, the reason why it took so long for me to finally uh, finish this project is because uh, this was one of those, you know, kind of pure do-it-yourself, no budget kind of, uh, you know, uh, films. Uh, literally, you know, how it got started is, you know, my, my brother sort of came up with this sort of rough idea, me and him sort of talked about it, came up with the story. Uh, he, he just went off on his own, you know, wrote the script. When I read it, I fell in love with it and I, right away I knew, you know, I, I had to do this film. So, uh, like I said, we decided to do it totally on our own. It was just basically me and my brother, Lucas, uh, who, like I said, is also the writer and the producer of the film and also the actor in the film. Uh, and he also did, even did uh, all the sound on the film and the behind the scenes uh, the, that you're watching here. So it was a very, very small team. It was, just, like I said, just me and him. So, you know, if you're wondering if you can do a film, you know, with very few people, well, here's a perfect example of, of what you can do with, with practically just two people because it was literally just me and him. And of course, you know, we had the, the actors. So we had three main actors. Uh, Greg, uh, who played Michael, uh, is actually my youngest brother. Uh, and then the other two actors are Jeff and Tanya. Uh, I've worked with them on many other projects before. Um, and, you know, Jeff, I'm actually shooting a film with him uh, in May. Uh, it's going to be a feature film about, you know, end of the world kind of apocalypse where vampires taking over the world. So, uh, you know, and aside from that, we've done many, many other projects before. I also had my other two friends come out, uh, Paul and Katzper. They were playing the two uh, unlucky hunters in the opening scene that are running and, you know, end up getting killed. Um, and, uh, you know, outside of that, it was just, like I said, it was just that that was the whole team. Uh, a majority of it was just me and my brother. We had to handle everything. Uh, but it, what's fun about doing these kind of little projects is that it, it's just really, really fun because there's no stress, there's no budget, there's nothing, n no worries, basically, or, you know, or deadlines that you really have to meet. Um, so we kind of just took it easy. We, we, we shot the film over a course of four days or mo bulk of the shooting was done over four, four days. And, you know, we were just out in the woods, pretty much camping, as you see in the film, or, you know, hanging out by the lake and stuff like that. So it, it, was, it was really, really fun. Now, the first day of shooting was just the opening scene with, with my two friends. And, okay, yeah, looking at the dragon and a Katzper. As you can see up here, you know, the, the weather wasn't always cooperating, so we had some shots that was, you know, were out in pouring rain and some that were without rain, and some that were kind of semi. And I actually ended up using a lot of shots that were done in the rain. But if you see up here, for example, the same shot, but from a different angle, sometimes you can sort of fake it and hide it where the, the rain is not as visible. Um, so, so you know, we, we just kind of went with it. And this was not even a full day. It was maybe, uh, I would like to say, maybe four or five hours of filming. Uh, a lot of that was just sort of goofing off and, you know, and I was also flying my my first version, this was, this was back before, you know, uh, the DJ Phantom 3 came out. Uh, my first ever, you know, DJ Phantom that I took and I kind of converted it to carry a camera with a, with a gimbal. Was not the best setup, but, you know, I tried to get the, the, the smoothest shots I could for the film. And, and, you know, just getting interesting angles. And, and as you can see, one time I got way, way too close to my friend Paul and uh, nearly, you know, uh, I, I think shaved the, the, the hair on, on top of his head. <laughs> what? You almost got hit? <laughs> uh, aside from you know a few of these close calls, it was it was a pretty easy going and safe day. Uh, I, I did f fall down a few times. I remember with the camera while I was running in the forest, uh, and that's just simply because, we, like I said, it was it was pretty hard running over there. And of course, it was my bright idea to you know run with the with the, st the little steady cam that I had. And now you know this whole film was shot on the Canon 7D. I used mostly just the one kit lens that I had with it. And most of the shots were done either handheld or on this, uh, you know, fly cam that I had back in the day. I wish I had some of my newer steady cams that I have now. Uh, as you can see, for most of my films, I, I try to storyboard or at least storyboard the, the kind of key sequences, so I know exactly which shots I need to get and what angles. And this film was, was no different. All right. The uh, second day of filming was with Jeff, Tanya, and, and Greg. Uh, and it was, we shot most of the scenes that there were, the three of them are together, except this one key scene, uh, which was simply impossible because of a few different reasons that I'll get into in, in the tutorial that's actually 
talking specifically about how I got the scene and why I filmed it the way I did. So if you guys want to see the extra tutorials, just check the links in the description of this video or go to my website at tomantosfilms.com uh, and I'm going to be posting all of the, the tutorials uh, you know, with regards to this film over there. I also got to use the, my, my handheld stabilizer, which was the, the Flycam, uh, a lot for this movie. And, you know, f again, if I had a three-axis gimbal like I have right now, I'd probably use that. Uh, but even with this very affordable uh, stabilizer, uh, as you can see, I was able to get some really, really cool shots. And again, there's another tutorial talking about how I, I got this shot specifically and, and sort of how you can best use a, a stabilizer like this or a Steadicam or a three-axis gimbal. Uh, to sort of add a lot of cinematic camera moves and sort of when you use them, how, why, and then things like that. So again, that's another tutorial. Uh, as you'll notice, we also got a lot of scenes, you know, at the opening and the, and the closing of the film inside a car. Uh, now, f uh, the, some of the scenes were done, you know, approached differently, but I end up using for a lot of it uh, my do-it-yourself, you know, car door mount, which I have a tutorial for, that I did for that, you know, a long while. Uh, again, you can check the, the link for it in the description of this video. Uh, and there's also a few other sort of interesting ways that I mounted the camera and that I have since figured out how to how to mount the camera to cars and uh, as well as like a little review of some of the, the car mounts that, are, that I've been testing out uh, over the last little while. So uh, again, uh, you know, if you're interested in that, watch the tutorial, you know, about that. It's not the same. Uh, you did it! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> number one actor here. I mean, uh, number three actor. Uh, Whoa. One C, he's one C. Everybody is first Tomorrow, class. Tomorrow will be number one. Yeah. Yes. yes, you can finally have a marshmallow. Oh, After a whole day of filming, he was, all he was waiting for oh, is a marshmallow. Uh, now, of course, you know, when, you, when you're working on, on films, especially when you're working with people that you really like, uh, the atmosphere is really down to earth and there's a lot of, you know, goofing around and, and sort of, you know, uh, little pranks and stuff like that going on behind the scenes. So. Uh, you know, and of course this film was was no different, so it's, I, I think one of the reasons, or the main reasons why I really love my job and, and just love working on these kind of projects is, is, you know, the atmosphere and the kind of people you get to hang out with, and uh, and like I said, it's just, it doesn't really feel like you're working, so as you can see up here, there's some, some, some of the bloopers from the film. Mark it. Yeah, a strange balloon. <laughs> oh, it's a hen. Let's get all the things. I, I don't know. I don't ask I what they're know. up to, but they're up to something here. Hey, you want dibs on this first one? No. <laughs> okay, so, so say that line again, maybe. Hey, you want dibs on this first one? Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you can <What>? cancer. <laughs> the, oh, I thought Thanks. it was you farting. Motorcycle? <laughs> I miss him too. Okay. <laughs> 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 keep, keep rolling, keep... <laughs> Come on, Jeff, you can take it. <laughs> I literally couldn't breathe, and on top of that, look at my eyes. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> Makes it more emotional. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, if you guys want to see the, the full, you know, bloopers reel, uh, again, the link is in the, in the description below. Uh, and now on the, on the third and the fourth day of the shoot, uh, we ended up just getting just pretty much all the shots with, uh, with Michael, or you know, my little brother Greg. Um, and uh, it's pretty much, you know, all the shots where he's just in by himself or, you know, with the dragon. Uh, as you can see, here's some of the behind the scenes of how he did uh, some, of the, some of the sequences of him flying with the dragon. Uh, it's not as high tech as you might think. <laughs> Greg will now demonstrate how to fly. Okay, and now can you swing him slightly to, to the left side? Yeah, good, good. Action. Yeah, okay. But as you can see, you know, whatever technique works so, so you can get the, 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 the shot, uh, you know, that's, that's really what's important. Uh, so like I said, you know, once we finished filming the, the, those four days, I was busy. I, I think like two days later I had to go off to New York, then LA, and, and it just time went by and then winter came and I never really had the time to get all the, all the shots that I needed for the film. So. And that's why then the following year, which was, I think it was May of 2014, uh, I ended up, you know, going back to some of the locations that we filmed, uh, you know, the year be before that, and just sort of, you know, going by myself uh, with the camera, I got like some of the, the kind of what, you, uh, what I would call second unit shots. So just like the POV shots or shots, you know, with my brother, for example, the, the hunter, 
uh, and also a lot of the aerial footage I got there with, with the drone. So, you know, if you're wondering why I didn't finish the film, you know, right there in, 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 back in 2014, it's because, you know, to, f to do all the editing and then the, the special effects and then the color correction and sound, sound mix and all those things, uh, it just took a lot of time because, uh, like I said, I had to kind of spread out all the work over, over, a, a, peri over a one year period. And that's just simply because I was too busy with all my other sort of paid projects. Uh, so this, this film, it was kind of like one of these projects I would always come back to whenever I had a few hours free on this day or if I had a weekend where I wasn't doing anything. Um, but, you know, if in the end I got to finish it, uh, you know, I, you guys can watch it now, the film, and hopefully enjoy it. And now I've got some, you know, a lot of cool behind the scenes footage and, and, and tutorials that I can share with you guys. So, uh, as you can see up here, you know, aside from obviously the few drone shots, uh, the whole film was shot on the Canon 7D uh, with pretty much one lens, most of it handheld or on that little, you know, stabilizer, which is very cheap. You can, you can buy it used for under $100, a new one, I think it's like 150 bucks. Um, and that's it, no lights, nothing really that I used on this film. Uh, so again, you know, if, if, if you guys are aspiring to make a film of your, of your own, uh, again, don't look at what you don't have, but look at what you do have and use that, you know, the best that you can. So I hope, you know, my film and these behind the scenes uh, videos kind of inspire you to go out there and make your own films. And once again, if you guys want, you know, want to see all the tutorials based on this film or more information, or if you just want to see the film itself, if you haven't, uh, all of that is available, you know, on my website at tomantosfilms.com or just click the first link in the description of this video. Uh, also on my website, I have a bunch of exclusive tutorials, uh, such as the Dinner Date Short Film School, uh, which kind of documents and, and sort of shows you in detail how I made that short film. Uh, or for example, my Music Video Film School, where I show you three different music videos that I made. Uh, you know, everything from the planning process all the way to the, the post-production. And I also have a cool new product called the Lighting Dozen, where I just show you the cinematography techniques. So I show you how I set up the camera camera settings, what lenses, cameras I use, how I set up the lights, uh, and then also uh, what I do in post-production with regards to, uh, for example, the color correction of it and some any little you know, post-production techniques that I apply to it. So if you guys are interested, then please check out the, the store on my website. Uh, thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you next time.